25th, 2021, and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The Biden administration has published a rule that requires workers at large companies and institutions to get fully vaccinated for COVID-19 by January 4th or face weekly testing. Tom Howe reports employees who refuse to get vaccinated must wear masks in the workplace as of December 5th under the regulation from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The rule requires employers to interview workers and draft a roster of vaccination status within four weeks. Vaccination mandates are common in the military or as a condition of school attendance, though the sweep of these requirements within the private workforce is new and will be tested in courts across the country. The temporary emergency standard applies to 84 million workers nationwide. The Labor Union for Immigration and Customs Enforcement Officers has filed two workplace safety complaints about the Biden administration's handling of illegal immigrants and COVID-19 at the southern U.S. border with Mexico. Stephen Dynan reports the complaints say federal employees processing and releasing the migrants face conditions that amount to a death trap. They also allege that many of the federal workers are contracting COVID-19. A Texas processing facility designed to hold fewer than 1,000 people at times has topped 4,000 per day, according to the complaints. Employees have been falling ill after spending time in close quarters with illegal immigrants who generally aren't tested for coronavirus infection. A Russian analyst who served as a source for a dossier of accusations against former President Trump was arrested on charges of lying to the FBI about how he gathered the information. Igor Danchenko worked with former British spy Christopher Steele to compile the unproven claims about Trump during the 2016 presidential campaign. Jeff Mordock reports he's charged with five counts of lying to the FBI as part of special counsel John Durham's probe. If convicted on all five counts, he could face up to five years in prison and a $25,000 fine for each charge. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. Just like you listening to this podcast right now, Americans are increasingly closing their eyes and opening their ears for news and entertainment. Half of consumers feel burned out by screens and now listen to podcasts in their free time, our Sean Salai reports. That's according to the National Research Group, a global strategy firm focusing on entertainment and technology. The firm's survey of entertainment consumers in August found that one out of two Americans said they were suffering from screen fatigue and using podcasts to travel to new places and hear new perspectives. Spotify, the world's largest music streaming provider, has reported significant third-quarter revenue growth in its broadcasting properties. And Buzzsprout, the world's second-largest podcast host, nearly tripled its business in 2020 just from people deciding to start podcasts. That's a good reminder that you can find this and the rest of our Washington Times podcast just by searching Washington Times in your favorite podcast platforms. The White House has come under increasing criticism for tolerating China's purchases of Iranian oil. Analysts say that amounts to indirect Chinese support for Iran's nuclear weapons program, Guy Taylor reports, as well as Iranian posturing and rejections of U.S. and European attempts to restore the 2015 nuclear deal. European Union officials announced this week that talks on reviving the deal have stalled but will resume on November 29th in Vienna. It's unclear whether the U.S. and Iran can move closer to resuscitating the agreement. And finally, the British-based Center for Countering Digital Hate says 10 publications account for 69% of interactions on climate denial Facebook posts. Christopher Dolan, the president and executive editor of this publication, accused the center of seeking to tar prominent American conservative news and opinion outlets and conflating opinion pieces with news stories. Valerie Richardson reports the center urges Google and Facebook to cut off their advertising relationships with these publications. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Just search Washington Times. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.